Friday, welcome back to the underground broadcast, motherfuckers. Cheers. Let me hit it for you, motherfuckers who were here early. Let me hit it for Gober Kyle, OG Woke Packer. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pie. Private Pile, I'm gonna give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam! Ah, uh, yeah, Gomer. And hit for Super Saiyan Joko! I want to have the world! The world's most comfortable uh, pair of uh, ultra soft! Uh, 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 And today we are being not sponsored by Mad Dog 2020, Orange Jubilee. Ah, uh, yeah. We're using your ice cubes, Joku. I actually put him in. I put the ice cubes inside of ice cubes. Oh, couldn't be done, but I figured it out. They said it couldn't be done. I did it. The fuckers. You don't tell me. You can't do something. I'll find a way. Ya motherfuckers. Cheers. Cheers, motherfuckers. All right. Public service announcement. We fucked up. The weekend. Uh, mostly because we couldn't stream AEW. Uh, the pirating website I use for the first time ever failed me. I don't know. It's because they were in the Britons. And it was during the day. But they didn't have it. It's shit. And then, uh, fucking, I tried to get it for you guys. The sound, you know, we couldn't get a picture because Discord wouldn't let me show it. Uh, so, yeah, disappointment all around. I'm sorry for everybody for that. There's more disappointment because we're not watching WWE Bash of Berlin. Those motherfuckers, uh, they do, gotta be doing it early during the day, and I have to work and ass, so it's not gonna happen, all right? Uh, so, I don't know. Next time there's a pay-per-view, we'll try it again on the Discord. So, make sure you join that ass. I'll make a video later official video and just post post the discord link for everyone to join in and shit uh but yeah subscribe to our emergency channels just in case we get fucking banned which we probably might i don't know we're one strike away and remember we're on rumble slowly and i mean very fucking slowly uploading videos i only have three uploaded it takes a long time and uh and i work every day it's shit you motherfuckers. Anyways, apparently we need 20 subscribers on Rumble in order to get an address that says rumble.com slash underground broadcast. Because right now it's a bunch of XW123795 fucking a bunch of other letters that I don't even remember. And shit. But yeah. So yeah, join all that ass and don't forget to send stuff to our social media. So we're going to be right here for y'all motherfuckers. Oh shit. Turn that ass off. Uh, oh, getting ahead of myself. Social media is right there. Cinematic 665 for the X and uh, at the underground underscored underground underscored broadcast uh, for Instagram and TikTok. Fuck you. I don't want to get into it. We're just not doing it anymore. You motherfuckers. Whatever you send me on the motherfucking. Uh, social medias, I'll play here and shit. 
Uh, so, yeah. Let me go ahead and, uh, hey, cheers, Anthony Timmons, motherfucker! What is this ass? It's telling me that, oh, you have shitty internet and shit. Well, fuck you! Sons of bitches. Of course I have shitty internet. I live in a shitty neighborhood in a shitty town. What do you expect? Fucking dicks. Anyways. Super Saiyan Joku sent me this to my social media earlier and it says, It's Friday morning, son of man. Make no mistake, I'm gonna wake and bake plus smoke all of my all of my breaks. And then on my lunch, smoke too. The face, even more smoking before the show at the underground broadcast. During and after, then repeat. Cheers, my flowers. Hashtag. All I do is smoke and get high, he says. Marijuana, Mary Jane, hashtag roll up, light up, smoke up, and... Smoke weed every day. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, that gelato bubble gum. That shit looks like broccoli, motherfucker. I think they screwed you in that one. Hey! I still am a big fan of those fucking already grinded up weed. Look at that. Look at that beautiful fucking gorgeous grape gays ape or what that was pretty racist grape ape grape ape that's what they call it that's racist super saiyan joku motherfucker uh man i always always i'm, I'm amazed by this shit i told joku earlier when we were doing the live stream that i was like hey, i'm just gonna drive over there to vermont one of these days and Visit Joe Coon. He can take me to one of these dispensaries and then I'll drive back. Big deal. Fucking, I go to Google and I put my address in his. It says 30 fucking hours. The fuck I'm ever driving to go visit you, Joe Coon. Fuck you. 30 hours. Drive over there and then 30 hours back. That's like two and a half days for me and shit. Because I pee a lot, so I got to pull over. My dog too and shit. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, cheers, motherfucker. Thank you for sending me this ass. It was badass. I'm gonna smoke a little for this. Grape ape was a carbon form from the 70s. Oh. I don't know what that means, but it sounds interesting. All right. Let me go ahead and read the comments for y'all for this week. Uh, it says, uh, hey, you're welcome to sleep on my bed. I don't bite. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Somebody named Rowan. Rowan. Three. On the Super Mario, I was playing, uh, Rainbow Stars. Hi. Can you also play the fan game called Mushroom Kingdom Fusion? It combines elements from different games and has been development for 17 years. You'll love it. This motherfucker sounds like he's the guy who made the Mushroom Kingdom Fusion. He's just trying to get fucking guys to download his game. Look, motherfucker, I'm down. I'm done playing these pussy games from online. Um, uh, From now on, we're just playing the systems. We're playing the Switch or the PS4. Fuck that shit. Downloading and... All that ass. My computer freezes. It crashes. The OBS. Trying to stream. Uh, my computer's like 10 years old, alright? That would be four. Fucking back when Obama was president. That was a long time ago. And shit. You want this motherfucker to do stuff from nowadays? You're lucky we're even running this show right now. And ass. Last week, it fucked up all through the comments. And shit. What the fuck? Did I really fuck this up already? God damn it. I'm spilling stuff everywhere. Anyways, like I was saying, last week, it fucked up all through the comments and shit. All of it. Uh, and I didn't know how to fix it. And we didn't know how to fix it. And it fucked up. Uh, we got less views on that podcast than we did on any other ones. And, uh, I think every week, our views go down more and more. I don't know why. But oh well. Let's, uh, thank you for commenting, Rowan, number three. And shit. Let's keep going. Depose on the underground broadcast, number 28. He puts some sunglasses. 
some pink sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Depose, you motherfucker. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. Anthony Timmons on the alien was woke before woke was a thing. I never saw Prey. Was it good? Street Teen Tony replies, yeah, I think it's one of the best in the series. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. I think I, it's up there. My my Predator 2 is always my, my, my best one that I like. Uh, but this one's up there for sure. For sure, I like Prey a lot. I think I'll even put it, fuck it, I'll put it above them all. I don't even give a fuck. I thought it was that badass. They had that little girl's brother in the movie, in the movie. He looks like Corey Feldman. Oh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Anthony Timmons also says on the Jonathan Majors, got replaced by RDJ. It's not because he was black, it's because he gave his girl a black eye. And then Tony says, Black Eye. It sounds like a new Marvel character, like Hawkeye and Black Panther had a channel, a child, and they named him Black Eye. These motherfucker, this is a fucking racist right here. Y'all better settle down. No wonder we don't get any subscribers, y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> all right, all right, let's keep going. Oh, Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for this racist. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. Y'all let me know if at any time it's fucking up. Um, I mean, there's not much I can do to fix the stream. Just know that the video I'm recording at the moment looks good. Hopefully. So we'll see what happens with that ass. I can re-upload re it tomorrow. The edited pussy version. That's what I call it. Anyways, Rocco on the crow so bad, nobody will pirate it. We're going to talk more about that tonight. But Rocco says, my roommate usually downloads these pirated versions for us. He said the only version he could find for this movie was some Portuguese language with a very bad quality. Like it was shot with an old camcorder. What a shitty movie. Cheers, son of man. Hashtag. Live. Uh, I, st I, I couldn't find one. I'll talk more about that tonight. But yes, they're, they're, nobody's pirating this movie. That's sad. That's very sad. Um, DJ New Kid squatted up with us. He, he asked me, when's, when's the next time you squat up? On the Monday Night Gaming. Hey, by the way, I appreciate all you motherfuckers who have been showing up when I'm gaming. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it. That's I never I didn't think I could game and, and you all be interested in it. So it's uh, pretty cool. We'll be, we'll be keeping it going. Keep, keeping that shit going. Uh, uh, you know how that is. But yeah, he, he asked to squat up with us next time. I think Monday. Monday and Tuesday. Go over. We should, we should do the Fortnites. Just to stick to Mondays or, or Tuesdays. I don't know. If you're going to watch Raw, then we can do it on, on Tuesdays. But we did pretty good with Joku and DJ New Kid. We got like second place twice. Oh, we almost got first. We almost got first. Me and Joku got first one time when we played a duels. Uh, so, yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. Thank you guys for supporting that. Expanding the channel. On the RDJ is replaced by Majors. J Hart W says, Too many people try to use this because I'm black. Excuse, I'm sick of it. What about accountability? Has everyone forgotten about that? Talk, taking responsibility and learning from mistakes is what makes you grow as a person. He makes a very strong point right there. Jonathan Majors, He's one of these new millennial pussy ray, you know, pussy raised <coughs> people raised by parents with Ivy League schools. <coughs> Try to teach you that you can do anything you want in life. 
And if you can't, it's not your fault. It's someone else's fault. And blame someone and cry and cry and bitch and complain. But you get what you want. <laughs> Fuck you, Jonathan Majors. You got what you deserve. You're shamed and shut away from Hollywood. Nobody likes your ass anymore. That's what you get for beating people. You dumbass. Anyways, cheers, J Hart W. I'm choking over here on the goddamn smoke. For fuck's sakes. Come with a warning label on this weed. <laughs> oh! Cancel for life! Let me hit it for this dick. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So another. One. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three things that a black man can't get? A black eye, a fat lip, and a job. I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. You fucking racist. Anyways, on the acolyte failed, he says. Take it easy, son. You're gonna have a heart attack. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Because I, I was ranting about the acolyte, and, and my rant is relevant. Everything I say is true. Fuck the fucking stupid ass series and, and the bullshit that is Star Wars ever since Disney bought it. An ass. One good promising movie they gave us The Force Awakens, and then everything fell apart. Fuck you! We're moving on. To this Asian yellow motherfucker, Robo Iger! Konichiwa! Hey, Robo says, hey, I want the gaming. He says, I think it's cool you're gaming, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I always was. I always was. Uh, I just, you know, wouldn't record it. Good way to expand the channel. I don't game much myself, but my kids do. I don't think I'll be letting them game with you anytime soon. And he puts a laughing face. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. I try to get over through the comment section, and then I'll try to fix it. All right. God damn it. I hate when it does that. That's two weeks in a row. And it's always during the comment section. Anthony Timmons on why the Acolyte failed. Tell us how you really feel, son. But yeah, the Acolyte was really fucking stupid. Yeah, it really was. Everyone hates it. Shit. <laughs> DJ New Kid just put a bunch of laughing faces on that same video. And then on the Robert Downey Jr. and Jonathan Majors, he says... Black and white, a hundred times worse. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, it's lagging. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, let me get through with the comments, and then I'll we'll figure this out. I don't know how many more comments there are. I'm just going to fast forward through them. Oh, my God. Robo Igert says, You're not lying, because I was talking about Star Wars, and I like seeing them fail. Take my youngest to the toy aisle and the Star Wars section is full of junk. No one wants to buy it. Hashtag. Live. Anthony Timmons says, the good ship Acolyte is sinking fast and they say let the House of Mouse go down with it. The House of Mouse is more and more becoming the House of Rat. They're poison. Then Gomer says, screw him, cheers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Live. Cheers, Gomer. And the last comment of the night is Super Saiyan Joku. He says, that was fun. Hashtag. He says, who wants to get jizzed on? Go to send a man. Meow. Cheers. Oh, yeah, because I had a bottle to heal everybody. Jizz. All right, we're back. I don't know how I fixed it. It magically fixed itself. Right? I just vented to all these motherfuckers. Fucking YouTube has been fucking with our channel. They hate us. 
They are jealous that we have something fresh, new, and original. Non fucking produced by corporate entities. And they fucking hate it. They wanna fucking bring it down, sons of bitches. Anyways, we're back. Let's get this show on the road. I'm fucking angry. Uh just, just the way I like it. So let's let's get let's get going. Alright. Let's move on to the weekly pop culture breakdown. All right, and I am going to start us off with a downer, unfortunately, because this week, uh, Gomer Cow actually let me know, but Sid Udi, Uday, Vicious, passed away at the age of 63 years old uh, from cancer and shit. God damn it, Sid Vicious, bro. This guy's a legend. And he's huge. Was huge. Another legend taken out by cancer. Another beast. A monster among men. God damn it, bro. When are we gonna learn? Never. Never. Ah. <sighs> You know, I still remember the promo he cut on, on, who was it? Kevin Nash on WCW, and he fucked it up. Where he said, I have half a brain that you do. <laughs> then embarrassing. Unfortunately, that's what I always remember him by. <laughs> um, yeah, the sad about this, man, is that this motherfucker, months ago, this was a post he posted. He said, hopefully this year will be when I get inducted to the Hall of Fame. That time is ticking. I mean, he already knew that he had it. When he, I mean, he's saying it like that. He knew. So it's now or never for me. That sucks. With Vince McMahon gone, the company is more open to suggestions. Triple H needs to hear the voices of my fans. Ah. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Isaac Yankum is Kane. <laughs> Fucking Street Team Tony. He was the, the, the dentist. No, this guy was Psycho Sid, Sid Vicious. Uh, I don't think he played anyone else but Sid. The Psycho Sid. <sighs> Damn, bro. It sucks when we lose, we lose uh, legends like this at a very young age, too. Hopefully, Triple H stop being an asshole and then duck this man. He already passed away, so boo-hoo. Fuck you, Triple H. Son of a bitch. Fucking slept his way to the top. You want to talk about that? Triple H slept his way to the top. Yeah, yeah. If there ever was a whore, a man whore, there he is. Triple H. Uh-huh. Anyways. Cheers to Psycho Sid. You will be missed, brother. Brother, cheers. Uh, but we are talking about tragedies and sad news. It's tough out there, everybody. Paying the bills. Working the jobs. Getting out there, trying to make a living. We're not rich and famous. Like a lot of these beautiful people we're talking about tonight. So we are in thick in the mud. And as my friend, good friend, Street Team Tony has once said, the struggle is real. For all of us, human beings who breathe air. It's so hard that it's even affecting the Hollywood cannibal community. Yes, my friends, because none other than known Hollywood cannibal. That means eater of human beings and flesh. Army Hammer has come out and talked about going through hard times here in Biden's economy. 
And the future of Kamala Harris shitting all over this country as well. Ah, uh, poor Army. He's dealing with hard times, my friends. He posted a video on IG. Before I comment on anything, I'm going to let him. You're going to hear it straight out of the dragon who eats flesh's mouth. Here we go. In his own words, hard times by Army Hammer. So I've been back in LA for a couple of weeks now. This is my truck. I bought this for myself uh, in 2017 as a Christmas gift for myself. Because I've, I've had pickup trucks for a long time and I have loved this truck intensely and taken it camping and across country multiple times and on long road trips. And I took it for one last road trip. It's CarMax. This is not an ad for CarMax. Uh, this is because I'm selling my truck. Uh, since being back in LA, I have put about four or five hundred dollars worth of gas in it and I can't afford it. I can't afford the gas anymore. I mean this truck, like a kid's home from the hospital, all that stuff. Um, amazing trips, amazing trips, but you know what? That's okay. I got a new car. It's tiny. It's a hybrid. I'm probably going to put about 10 bucks of gas in it a month. And this is it. You see, he is having hard times. He can't, he's having so hard times out there stuffing everybody that he has to sell his truck. His gas guzzler costing him $500 a week of gasoline. He says he's had a lot of fun trips, taking the kids to the hospital. You heard him. He did say that. He says fun trips, taking the, hits, the kids to the hospital because we were roughhousing and I took a few bites out of them. Got a little excited. Looked a little juicy, tender, kind of like veal. Took a few bites out of the kids. I took them to the hospital, get them stitched up. It's not a big deal. All right, it happens all the time when you're young. All right, when you're kids, you get into little scuffles, little you know, scrapes. You got to go in and get stitched up. That's all that happened. He bit a couple of his kids. Not a big deal. The kids understand. The father's hungry. He's hungry. Uh, I don't know, Army. Maybe we didn't eat human flesh and would have to spend thousands of dollars importing Korean babies over so you can eat every night. Maybe you could afford fucking $500 of gasoline to your fucking Black Denali fucking F-350 truck you drive around, you fucking piece of shit. The dumbass. Walking around, now he's gonna get a hybrid. Oh, let me save some money so I got extra, extra money for, for more babies to eat and cook and shit. So I don't have to eat my own kids. Take it to the hospital to get stitched up and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will say one thing, and it's a trick, though. The gas has gone down the past two weeks. Yeah. It was like 325 here all summer long. Right now, suddenly, it's 270. Oh, oh Biden. Biden's helping. Democrats are helping. Make sure you vote for them. Fuck you. What about the last four years, you sons of bitches? Just because you lower gas the past three months, it ain't gonna mean shit. You motherfuckers. And fuck you, Army Hammer. You and your cannibalistic ways. He's taking a bite out of your children. You can't afford gas and shit. You dumbass. You deserve it. You idiot. You had it good in Hollywood. All you have to do is keep your mouth shut. Keep your perversions and your lifestyle quiet. Behind the secrecy of your own doors. Behind doors in your own home. That's how people do it over there, you dumbass. You go over there, you try to tell the world, like, Hey, yeah, I like eating people. It's fucking badass. There's a lot of us. Everybody in Hollywood was like, No, there's not a lot of us. It's just you by yourself, you fuckhead. You're canceled. You dumb ass. Anyways, we're not going to cheer to this asshole. We're going to cheers because we don't like cannibal motherfuckers. All right, this is for fucking human beings who eat other animals, not humans. All right, we don't eat humans. We eat animals and fishes and, and plants. Anything else, oh no, anything else that's not human, we'll eat it. But we don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. <sighs> D 
Denali is GMC. I don't know, Anthony Timmons. It was a big fucking black truck. It all looks the same to me. Those dumbasses driving around. And then the big fucking trucks, and then they want to complain about the gas. You know, I don't know how many motherfuckers I see trying to park or, or pull out or reverse or even just turn the corner in these big ass trucks, and they can't do it. They can't do it. And I'm like, why the fuck did you buy it if you can't even drive it, you dumb piece of shit? I hate people with big trucks because most of them don't know how to drive it. They don't. They're idiots. And it's usually a dumb Mexican trying to show off. Oh, look, I finally made 50 grand in this country. Let me throw it all away on a fucking vehicle that's not going to give me the money back. It's only going to take more money for me because I got to pump $500 worth of gas every week like Army Hammer. Fucking dumb Mexicans. No wonder you fucking come all the way over here to only to fuck up more. You idiots. You're just a... Thousands of Indians move over here to America to have a better life and shit, to own a house and property and all this ass. Within three years, they realize that none of that, none of that makes them happy. And they move back to their shitty ass country with dirty water and trees and fucking poison and shit and ass. Because they're happier over there somehow. Why? Because all of this ass that we have here in America doesn't make nobody fucking happy it makes us depressed it makes us stressed out it makes us angry and it doesn't bring us any peace to our souls you idiots yeah anyways a little carried away there fuck you army hammer son of a bitch we're gonna move on to more ass we're talking last week motherfuckers and the week before actually that disney was getting sued by some man whose fucking democratic fucking Karen of a wife got food poisoning by some motherfuckers who put, you know, almonds and milk and shit in her food when she told them not to. They're trying to sue Disney, but that dumbass went ahead and motherfucking, you know, signed up for Disney Plus and he got fucking screwed. And now he can't sue Disney. But motherfuckers like me who talk shit. Started talking shit about Disney. And Disney started feeling bad. And they said, okay, we'll take it to court. Don't worry about it. We'll go to court. We'll go to court. We're still going to defend ourselves. And we're not going to let you win. Because we have the best fucking lawyers in the business. You son of a bitch. That's pretty much what Disney was saying. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Disney is so heartless. Soulless. Piece of shit company, by the way. That not only do they try to sway and change the narratives for their own benefits in the public eye so they can continue taking your money, you idiots. But they really don't give a fuck. Because this whole situation apparently is a joke now in their Disney parks. Yeah. They've made this whole situation. This lady who died because one of the employees purposely gave her shit she asked that I was allergic to. It kind of was her fault. She didn't walk in there with a Kamala Harris shirt and was acting like a bitch. I mean, I think anybody would have done the same thing, but, you know, she was asking for it. She was asking for it. Anyways, she died. And shit. Well, now these motherfuckers are making it into a joke. Oh, it doesn't matter if she died. The, 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 the fucking father, her, her husband's trying to sue us. We're Disney. We're going to fucking win and everything is okay. In a funny situation. I'm going to show you the joke. The mockery of somebody's, somebody's death. Somebody's mom died. And Disney don't give a fuck about it. Here we go, folks. And headed to the big battle. Cinderpool was late because he had to read every single page in the terms and conditions when he signed up for Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, they do. It's fun. Ah, Deadpool's made a billion dollars. Let's use Deadpool to make fun of this fucking death lawsuit. Why do people still give them money? Why are you still giving them money? Look at how evil they are. 
a lady died in your fucking restaurant. You trick people by selling them a product, uh, Disney Plus, and having them put agree, enter, download, and then not reading it saying you can't sue us when your fucking spouse dies in our parks and restaurants. You trick people. You fucking trick people. You take their fucking money. And then you still want to mock them in public while wow, people pay people pay to have that just have that joke said to them. People paid money to have that joke said to them. You paid money to have Disney mock you and say fuck you, you idiots. Give us more money, you dumbass. God damn it. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with everybody? No one's pissed about this. Everyone thinks this is funny. Oh, because Deadpool said it, and Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Yeah, and Hugh Jackman's back, and he's hot as fuck with a six-pack, and he's never going away. Fuck you! God damn it. The kingdom of the rat. You're so right, Timmons. The evil, satanic, Nazi rat. Is what it is. Look, that's it. That's the way Hitler looked. Wearing the red pants and the fucking suit and shit. It's got all the Nazi colors. Red, black, and yellow. Son of a bitch. Fuck you, Mickey Mouse. Making a mockery out of a person's death. I don't understand why people are still giving them money. The ridiculous fucking prices at their fucking parks. Fuck you! Anyways. Cheers! Not to any of this ass. I'm not cheering to this. This is not even good celebrity news. I'm usually praising these people. These gems in our society. These fucking gods among men. I praise them! But not right now. A lot of this has been ass. It's pissing me off. That's all he needs is the mustache, you're right. The motherfucker looked just like Hitler. Anyways. Oh, the bad news just keeps on coming. It really does. Because apparently, none other than Chase Iron Eyes, the father of Dakota Iron Eyes, the abducted little Native American girl that Ezra Miller took away from her from her reserve, from her little fucking shitty ass huts that they live in with trash and filth all over the place. They don't even have running water, and they fucking have one outhouse toilet for the whole community, and it smells like ass. Ezra Miller took her away from there as soon as she took 18 years old and drove her around across all the United States doing drugs and alcohol and ecstasy, going bar to bar as he violated through chairs at people's faces, sped on people, hopped on bartenders' backs, fucking punched a lady, choked another pregnant woman, uh, fucking started getting obscenities at somebody outside of a Chili's restaurant and shit. And let's not forget, broke into a house drunk. Because he thought they were trying to get their liquor from their cabinets and shit while the people were out of town. So yeah, this little girl is basically an accomplice to all of that. And uh, originally Chase Iron Eyes, the father of this little girl who, who ran away with this fucking degenerate son of a bitch who gives the whole fucking trans non-binary community a bad fucking name. And destroyed the DC Universe. The Snyderverse died because of you, you dumbass. <sighs> Her dumbass father has now dropped all charges. And it said, I am no longer pursuing any legal shit. This little girl is gold enough. She can go do drugs and get fucked up all she wants. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he said now. So Ezra Miller is cleared of another crime he did commit. Let's face it, there he is, that little girl. You tell me that's not somebody on drugs. The fuck that's not somebody on drugs. I don't know what that is. That little girl is so fucked out of her mind. She's leaning. She's fucking on morphine right there and shit. That little girl's fucked in, in the fucking head right there. She, she's not even present. Her consciousness is in another fucking plane of existence. It's just a husk of a body right there. Ezra Miller's all like, I'm still waiting for my fucking pill to kick in. I'm jealous, he said. Fuck you. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I think Timmons is right. Ezra paid him. Obviously. Look, your daughter's 18. She's never coming back. Let me just give you some money. Just everything will be okay. This guy lives in a shithole anyways. So he said yes. He's only going to piss it away on alcohol or weed or some fucking drug and shit. I mean, you got to be on drugs if you're going to be walking around looking like this and shit. You got a dead fucking dog there on your fucking back stinking up the place. You're kind of carrying around a dead chicken. And I don't know, you got an accordion on your fucking chest and shit. I'm kind of embarrassed that you braid your hair like me, you dumbass. Ah, oh, it looks like one of my uncles too, because my uncle's not a dumbass like this dumbass walking around with a dead fucking dog there. You idiot. You bury your animals where we're from. We don't carry them around. You imagine my dog dies, I carry him around on my back. Like, that's crazy. Anyways. I don't know what the fuck's going on this week. Ezra Miller's innocent all of a sudden. They better not give this son of a bitch another chance. They better not give him another uh, TV row or uh, James Gunn is all like, You're hired. You're going to be the new Flash. Fuck you, James Gunn. You better not fucking give this guy another chance. He's out. You don't bring somebody back once they're canceled. They're canceled for life. All right? Don't be giving me this bullshit, motherfuckers. I swear to God, I'm going to start fucking shitting on people. I'm going to start literally going over there and get fucking defecating on people's faces and mouths and shit. I'll do it. I'll start with this fucking little girl. Move on to her dad over here. And Ezra Miller, I'm saving it, saving you for last, son of a bitch. Anyways, we're moving on for this ass. Cheers to none of this. Just cheers because I want to get drunk to forget. God damn it. Ah. More bad news. I, don't, I feel, honestly, I literally feel like I fell into some kind of wormhole this week. And I was sucked in to this deep black asshole in space and time. And I fucking traveled through all of this deep, dark, cavernous orifice. When I came out and got shat out the other side. This is what I saw. Apparently. They're doing a Steve Harvey biopic. And my only question is. Why? I mean, first of all, he hasn't died. But most importantly, he has done nothing. What memorable, amazing fucking thing has this black man done for the world of Hollywood? Nothing. Nothing. He know Bernie Mac. He's not an amazing comedian. He didn't do fucking a badass multi-million dollar movie like Chris Tucker, who's known forever. He's not Kevin Hart. He's not Chris Rock on Saturday Night Live. He's not a hilarious comedian like Eddie Murphy. What has he done? A fucking show 
on the CW or whatever that black TV network is, BET and shit. And now he's on a game show with a family feud. Oh, let's make a movie about him because he revolutionized and changed the industry. The fuck you did. You've done shit. You Illuminati scum. You piece of shit. You murdered Bernie Mac. You fucking betrayed him. And you're the reason he died. You turned him in. Sacrificed him to the Illuminati. You piece of shit. I don't know if you guys know that conspiracy theory. Look it up. Steve Harvey is responsible for Bernie Mac's death. And the only reason this motherfucker has a TV show and has money now. Kings of comedy, my ass. The kings of comedy. You were never a king of comedy. You dumbass. I don't know what the fuck is going on this week, fellas. Psycho Sid dies. Army Hammer can afford food and is biting his kids, sending them to the ER. Disney is mocking all of us. And now they're making a Steve Harvey biopic. Gotta try to shove it down everyone's throat. Oh, if you don't watch this, if you don't support it, if you talk bad about it, you're a racist. Fuck you! The kings of comedy. The kings of fucking bullshit selling your soul to the devil. That smile says it all, motherfucker. That ain't a mustache. That's literal fucking shit from the rim of the devil's asshole he has right there above his lip. That son of a bitch. Bald-headed son of a motherfucker. I'm done. I'm done. This celebrity's pissed me off this week. I don't even know what to say, bros. Like, these people let me down this whole week. I'm done with these sons of bitches. I couldn't even give you not Yeezy some good news or nothing. His wife stayed indoors. Didn't show her titties or nothing. God damn it. Uh, fuck Steve Harvey and fuck all that shit. That's all I'm gonna say. Cheers to you motherfuckers. I appreciate y'all being here tonight. Friday night at the Underground Broadcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Let's pour it up for my dead homies that are still alive, but they have died to me. They're dead to me. Yeah. So I'm pouring it to them. Those dead sons of bitches. You might as well be dead to me. All of you. Not you. Not, not the woke pack. Never the woke pack. Remember, it's always... I'm talking to those fuckers, so-called friends, betrayers, abandoners of the craft we're creating. You know what I'm talking about? Pussies. Anyways, we're moving on. I don't know why I'm pressing buttons. I'm really high. We're moving on. To the weekly comic book nerd shit. And this week, I am going to start us off with the shitty ass Bill Skarsgård wannabe Crow movie. I was honestly really hoping I could review this for you tonight. I genuinely wanted to review this for you. And I think I have made a decision in my head that whenever this finally comes out in digital I will review it on the channel just because this is the first movie ever ever in the fucking four years 
been watching this show, that no one pirated this for us. So and 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 and, and still the whole week went by, and I couldn't I couldn't find a pirated version. Honestly. So I can't review it. Uh, I can't give you my honest thoughts on it. I can tell you what everyone else thinks or has thought. They think it's ass. Literal hot ass coming out of someone else's ass that they're shitting out. Literal. A hot, disgusting, deformed ass being shit out of another fucking ass is what people are saying about this. And uh, the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie, my friends. Because this is fucked in so many levels. A movie, which by the way, I the only thing I'm going to give them props, uh, uh, the only thing I can give them props for, because I haven't seen the movie, I don't know, I can't judge it at all. The only thing I, I will give them props for so far is that they only spent $50 million on this movie, which is amazing. Because movies nowadays cost in the hundreds of millions. And I'm not talking about just Marvel movies. Uh, just regular movies too, man. They'll go into the hundreds of millions expecting to get a big fucking payout back. Nobody makes the money back nowadays. You're rolling the dice. All right. You need to get some badass actor or some shit everyone loves. If not, you're not going to make that money. So I thought it was smart of them to only spend 50 million. Frankly, I still believe that you could make a good fucking movie with special effects with special effects badass special effects for 20 million dollars and the reason why i say that is because godzilla minus one was 15 million dollars and that movie looked better than any of the ass that they feed us over here that's worth 100 million all right so i know you can make a really good movie with just 20 million dollars you don't need big budgets. So I can give it to them for saying we don't need a big budget. 50 million. Good for them. Unfortunately, this movie apparently sucks so much ass that it's only made $9 million worldwide since it's been released. And this was figures from Thursday, not, not today. These are figures from yesterday. They might have changed today. Wow. That's the first week. The first week for any movie. Statistically, provenly, pro proven. Statistically, it's been proven that the first week for any fucking movie is the highest grossing week they're going to have. And from there, it is a slow decline. If this is the highest week they're going to make $9 million, this movie was probably going to end its entire box office run worldwide with $10 million. The biggest failures used to be the Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds, that quickly got toppled by The Flash, by Ezra Miller, because everyone came... No, they didn't come out in droves. They stayed home in droves, and they said, we're not going to support this transsexual menace to society and this criminal. And no one supported that movie, and that actually became the biggest failure. Now, we're not talking about money being made. We're talking about budget versus the money being made uh, uh, comparing to a big failure that it was. It used to be Green Lantern. The Flash replaced it because they they spent over four hundred million dollars on the Flash and it didn't it only made like two hundred million. The Flash replaced it, and then Brie Larson's lesbian piece of trash movie with those with no men, all about women movie came out, and that movie beat the Flash on being 
the most expensive movie and the, the worst the worst turnout. Well, this movie takes the cake for all of them. For all of them. This is a huge gap. And I gotta tell you one thing. It's gonna be a long time before any movie dethrones this as the biggest box office failure of all time by these numbers. And that sucks and, and is very sad. Unless Tommy Wiseau comes out with The Room Part 2 and releases it nationwide in theaters, no movie's ever gonna top this failure. Is basically what I'm saying. Oh, wow. I can't wait to see this and review it for you all. <laughs> Watch me love it. Oh, I love the room. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I fucking love... I My friends hate it when they come over. They, they get, I'll, I'll put on the room for them and shit, and they get pissed. And I sit there watching it, laughing and drinking, and I love the room. I love Tommy Wiseau. If I ever make a, a fucking movie... Or a TV show, Tommy Wiseau is gonna be in it, is all I'm gonna say. And I'm not gonna pay him anything, I'm just gonna give him drugs and get him high and drunk and have a bunch of prostitutes have sex with him. Cheers! Ah, oh, yeah! <laughs> Anyways, this movie sucks so much ass. That the original director from the first movie trolled them. Oh, he went on his fucking Alex Poy Poy Proyas. That sounds like Dick in Spanish, by the way. <laughs> Alex Dick or Phallus, Alex Phallus. Ah, he's got one of these foreign names, an idiot. You should have changed it to an American name so you sound normal. You sound perverted, you idiot. This Alex Phallus says, I thought the remake was a cynical cash grab. Well, not much of a cash grab, it seems. Oh! <laughs> This fucking guy just trashed the fact that they only made nine million dollars in one week. Oh, this fucking guy is a legend. Even though I didn't even know him, nothing. You know, most of the time, especially from movies back in the day, unless it was Michael Bay or Spielberg or Lucas, no one gave a shit about directors. Nowadays, directors are just as famous and popular as the actual actors. Not, not back in the day. So I don't even know the director for the original Crow. Uh, but this guy is a badass in my book for saying this badass shit. And I'm officially making him a Woke Pack member. Alex Fallis, you're a Woke Pack member, you son of a bitch. Woke Pack. This motherfucker. Ah, that's that's a fucking bird. <laughs> the the remakes are cash grabs. Well, not much of a cash grab here. <laughs> Damn. I really want to see this movie now. I'm not playing. Woo! Bill Skarsgård is a good fucking actor, man. I've liked him in everything he's done, man. I really have. I like his family, the Skarsgård's family. Stellan Skarsgård, the one who plays uh, Elvig Selvig on the fucking MCU. That man who's naked in his underwear scientist and shit from Thor. That's not his best work. That guy has done good fucking roles. There was this show on HBO, and it was a show about the fucking, uh, what was that called? Chernobyl? About, about when it first happened, and that guy's in it? Oh, that show is so good, and that guy's so badass in it. Stellan, Stellan Stars, Skarsgård. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, the other pretty boy fucked up. I don't know. He came out in one movie and he came out in the Logan movie and then they didn't use him anymore. Uh, he also came out in the Northman. He's ripped as fuck. The other Scars Guard. I forgot what his name is. But, um, I like Bill. I really do like Bill. Um, we'll see when this movie, when this movie comes out on digital, I'm going to review it finally. Uh, and I'll give you my, 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 uh, my opinions on it. I'm curious. Because everyone's trashing this. And uh, I really want to see it. And make up my own mind. So, hopefully you'll get that soon here. On the Underground Broadcast. Cheers. Alright. Let's get to some ass that I know about and everyone else knows about but this week uh, it was this big fat troll that came out of his cave out of his slumber he came out of his cave he decided that he was angry he was angry at the house of the dragon and it was none other then Jorge R. R. Martin, that son of a bitch, he came out and he said, I am not happy with the changes and the direction of the show, the house of the motherfucking dragon. I am the guy who wrote the goddamn books and I am furious at what they're doing with this show. I am going to spend the next few months Writing a blog every day for all of you. Explaining my frustrations and the things I had do not like about this show. Because I am the guy who wrote the books. And I don't like what they're doing with this. I do not approve. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. That shit doesn't work. Fuck you, George R. Martin. Finish the goddamn final book. What do you mean you're going to spend the next fucking few months writing blogs, explaining, complaining about what you don't like about the goddamn show? Motherfuck you. The goddamn Game of Thrones ended fucking four years ago. You fucking started the last book in 2013. And you still haven't finished it. You want to complain about a show they're doing? You son of a bitch. Get your fat ass off your fucking recliner. Or your fat bed. Or your hookers. Or whatever the fuck your live turkey or baby you're eating. And fucking get to writing the fucking story. And finish it for people who have been invested in it for years. Before you fucking die. God Damn it. This idiot. What a moron. Oh, I haven't finished a book that the show caught up to. That I, that I started in 2013. I haven't finished writing it. But I'm pissed off, so let me write. Let me take my time and write. About why I'm pissed off about the show and write all the details what I don't like. Write what they're changing that they shouldn't have changing. Fuck you. You need to write down and finish the goddamn book you're supposed to finish from a long time ago. You Almost 10 years, you idiot. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Everyone's saying your blood pressure. Calm down, you're gonna blow a gasket. I know, I just fucking got... Literally, I just made hemorrhoids. Just pop.
pop out of nowhere, out of existence right now. Out of my anger. Fuck you, George R. R. Martin. That's why I'm grabbing my side right now. Because it hurts. Uh... <sighs> you know, I'm, I'm more pissed that I gotta wait two years to see the next season of House of Dragon. I'm more pissed that there was only eight episodes of season two instead of ten. And they didn't end with the Battle of the Gullet the way it should have been. Idiots. I don't give a fuck about this old man. The show finished. Fuck you if you finished the book. I don't give a shit anymore. I don't. Are you going to change? Like, the make no. That everyone's waiting for this book. I promise you, Daenerys is going to die. Jon Snow is going to go to the fucking wall. It's going to be basically the same thing. Minor differences. Why? Because some characters are actually still alive in the book that died in the series. Minor differences. But the same shit's going to happen. So I don't need to see, I don't need to fucking wait for the last book. I need to see the fru fruition of these fucking shows come to life. And I need these shows and seasons to be in 10 episodes long. I don't know why these studios don't wise the fuck up and film two, three seasons at a time. Oh, we take two months, three months out of the year to film. Then take six and film three seasons. You pay all these pieces of shit actors the same price because you get them all in one contract. Fuck you. Because every year they get more famous, you got to pay them more. A new raise and a raise and a raise. Times are hard. You get them all to film three seasons at once. You pay them with one rate. You save some money. You wonder why these assholes are going broke. They don't know how to manage their own fucking money either. God damn it. The streaming services, to begin with, are a sham. There's no way for these assholes to continuously make millions of dollars. Why? Because these are TV shows. TV shows that you're paying $10 a month with a bunch of other content. Movies. And if you want people to stay subscribed, you need to keep feeding them stuff and making more stuff. So why you're spending hundreds and millions of dollars creating content... You're probably getting a few million back every year. So, uh, yeah, the streaming services is going to be the end of a lot of studios because they're, they're not figuring out how to do this right. Mostly because they want to spend two, three hundred million dollars making a fucking eight episode show, six episode show. Marvel's doing the six episodes and they're spending two hundred million dollars. Fucking idiots. It's, it's management. It's management of money. And it's this fat ass who doesn't get off his ass and start doing something with his life. All right. He's, and I get it. I get it. He said, ah, I wrote the books a long time ago. I'm enjoying the fruits of the labor. And that's fine. Enjoy the fruits of the labor. But don't fucking say, I'm going to write a blog for the next fucking whatever about all this shit I hate. When you actually should be writing the book. For the people that have been waiting for it. I don't give a fuck anymore. I know. I don't. Genuinely don't. I know it's not going to change the ending. I know Jon Snow is going to fucking be a, like just left there. There's not going to be a Jon Snow continuation. You're going to die. So you're not going to write any more books. It's sad. I already know how a sequel would go. In my, in my fucking heart. And shit. In my fucking heart. Fucking Daenerys... The dragon took her dead body and took her to Valeria where he resurrected her. And she's going to come back as, or actually, yeah, yeah, Valeria. Instead of being the ice queen, she's going to come back as the fire queen with an army of undead. But instead of ice people, they're all fucking fire and shit. And she's going to come take her revenge on Jon Snow and the Seven Kingdoms. And that's, that's what I would have done. But we're never going to see nothing because this piece of shit's never... Never gonna get off his ass. So fuck this guy. We're moving on from this news. And I gotta stop all of a sudden because the cunt is here. I hope he's still here. 
What up, mate? Let me hit it for you all the way from Australia. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slop ready, because the cunt is here. Thank you for being here, the cunt. He might have left already. I don't know. Either way, thank you, sir. Good morning, mate. I hope everything is good and you have more shrimp and uh and and some dingoes on the bar bay, mate. Ah, uh, yeah, and some kiwis. Uh, what else is down there? Dingoes, kiwis. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of that cartoon, Tasmania. Come to Tasmania, come to Tasmania. I love that fucking Taz cartoon. Taz was always my favorite Looney Tune, and they never gave him enough, enough screen time in the old school cartoons. He was only in a few, but he was always my favorite. He was one of the first few characters I learned how to draw, like just out of memory. I could always draw Taz, badass. Uh, but yeah, Taz was a shit, and uh. I love Tasmania. It was a badass show, man. Uh, to me, as a kid, I liked Tasmania. Uh, he had a dad. The dad was like, uh, fuck, I don't even remember who they were. There were these comedians. Was it these comedians? They used to play golf. And they used to be, yeah, that's wild. That's wild. That's real wild. And shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a little brother and a mom and a sister. Fucking Taz. Yeah, yeah. Koalas. Koalas are from down under. Cheers, motherfucker! Fuck, the cut! If I ever make it, I'm gonna go... If I ever make it, I'm gonna visit each and every one of y'all motherfucking woke pack members. We'll do an episode with, with each and every one of you. In your hometowns and shit. Cheers! Alright. Something else that happened this week was there was some kind of promotion or some ass in some neighborhood and they decided to do some shit and somebody took a picture of this ass apparently there's a wolf man film from bloom house coming in january 17th of next year what the fuck that's crazy. I had no idea the Wolfman uh, IP was no longer at Universal. I don't know how this works. Maybe it's been long enough that anybody could use it. But Bloomhouse? Bloomhouse is crazy. You know, like, they do scary fucking crazy ass shit. Didn't Bloomhouse do like a... I don't know. Isn't Bloomhouse... I think they did Black Phone. Are they Terrifier? I don't know if Bloomhouse is Terrifier. I think it might be. Gomer, you might know. Some of you motherfuckers out there. But, yeah. Bloomhouse, apparently, is working on a Wolfman picture. It's pretty insane. And, and it kind of caught me by surprise. And you see an image of this house... On a farm. The lights are on at night. Really eerie. And shit. <clears throat> they did do. Uh, they didn't do a whole rated R movie. But they did do a. Werewolf by Night little special. One hour and a half. Or some ass like that. It was okay. It really did look. And had the feel of a. Old school 30s kind of film. The Marvel one. Um, actually, I'm not going to lie. I think The Werewolf by Night was pretty decent in the standards of... Compared to all the other ass they've been feeding us the past four years at, at Marvel and Disney. Werewolf by, by Night was actually pretty decent. Now that I think about it. God damn it. And that was only like a small little thing. And that one really did have a small budget. I bet you everybody, no, none of the, not even the big stars got paid good money. They gave them like a few thousand bucks and they all agreed to it. Because we're in the MCU. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolfman in theaters. January 17th by Bloomhouse. This is actually fucking promising. Bloomhouse is all I'm going to say. To me, it's promising. I still want to see a trailer. I like the setting. It's more like a, a farm by themselves out there, you know. I've always been. I I I, well, I hate the city. I live in the I live in the outskirts of the city, but I do live in the city. This is not the suburbs, not by far. The hood is where I'm at. To be honest, uh, but God damn it, I used to live in the country and I loved it. But at the same time, it's scary as fuck out there. When you start thinking about where you are at night. How far away you are from civilization and police and hospitals and help in general. Uh, it starts getting pretty scary. It starts getting pretty scary out there. And then you bring werewolves into the mix. God damn it, bro. I don't know what I would think. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, yeah, it's promising. Bloomhouse. Street Team Tony says Bloomhouse and A2024. A24 Studios. Uh, yeah, they're the open covers and they're really, really starting to wow. They're starting to wow moviegoers. You're real hardcore moviegoers because I'm a movie guy, man. I can sit there and watch movies, uh, dramas, and any kind of movies. You know, I like a lot of movies. Uh, I'm a movie guy. And so. And I, I, I like actors and shit like that and performances and, and ass. Uh, so, yeah. These two studios are, are coming up. You know, Bloomhouse is more of the horror and gore and shit, to be honest. A24 is trying to expand more into, like, bio and true stories. And, and really, like, man, there's been some crazy movies I've seen of A24. There's one called uh, Dream Scenario. With uh, Nicolas Cage. I recommend that movie. It is not what you think it is. I I don't know who thought of this movie. The concept. The scenario. It's called Dream Scenario. But yeah, the scenario of this movie is amazing. And whoever came up with the concept, I think, is, deserves a fucking uh, a, a good pat in the back or a good ass grab by his boss and good job motherfucker you come to the orgy tonight you know for sure because that's a fucking it blew my mind that movie blew my mind dream scenario completely blew my mind and it's i, I like it it's a really good movie i think it's one of nicholas cage's uh under underrated movies for sure the performances as well The Beast from Bray Road. I haven't seen that. I gotta check that out. Uh, I just downloaded The Beast The Beast from Within or The Beast. I don't know. Uh, Jon Snow is in it. I, I dare see some kind of werewolf or something. But Jon Snow is in it. Uh, I just downloaded that. So I gotta, I gotta sit down and watch some of these new movies I just downloaded. Anyways, The Wolfman coming to a theater near you. Get ready for that ass. It's gonna be good. Cheers. Black phone is sick as fuck. I loved it. They're doing a sequel. I don't know how you do a sequel to that. I mean, I think it pretty much ended. But they're doing a sequel. Mm. I love Black Phone too. It's one of those that had so many different elements because it had kidnappings and child predators it had ghosts um uh it had fucking you know elements of thriller and suspense it just esp like it had all these elements because that little girl had esp she fucking could sense things it could hear stuff they're just so many elements in one movie that I was just like, wow, like this is and, and it wasn't too much that it was all over the place. It was just really, really well written. Black phone was really good. Long legs. I just got it as well. I need to sit down and watch it as well. Long legs. Uh, it's a cryptic in Wisconsin. 
The Breeze from Bray Road. I gotta watch that. I gotta download that. Oh, it's not a movie. Timon says it's not a movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go search The Beast from Bray. Maybe it should be a movie, Timon. It should be a movie. Anyways. Cheers, y'all. Thank you for being here on a Friday night. Let's keep this going. This week, they showed us the first image and logo official of Jurassic Park Rebirth with hottie, hot as fuck, fresh out of shitting out a baby, Scarlet Yost, Scarlet Yost Hansen in Jurassic World Rebirth. Oh my god. The title for me of the most beautiful woman on earth used to be Charlize Theron. Unfortunately, women don't age like wine. And it doesn't get any better. They get wrinkly and, and then they do plastic surgery and they fuck up their faces even more. They look weird. Scarlett Yost is the most beautiful woman on earth. And god damn it, I can't wait to see her sweaty, bloody, panting, running away from dinosaurs and whatever little plaid little shit she's wearing with her little shorts and combat boots. It's gonna be amazing and hot as fuck. And hopefully she still, she has some of that baby weight. You know what I'm saying? After you get babies, oh yeah, that body gets thicker, fellas. Oh yeah! We can get some thicker, some bigger boobs. Because she's, she's just gave birth, so she's breastfeeding. They're nice and full. And a bigger ass, too. Cheers, Scotty Yells! I love you! I can't wait for this fucking movie! It's gonna be so good and shit. Fucking, oh, Scarlet Yo is a beautiful, 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 stuck up fucking woman. Stuck up. I just going by the rumors. It says she's really stuck up and full of herself, and she might not even like you when she meets you. She's like, ugh, dirty Mexican. Fuck you, bitch. Let me sh let me show you my dick. We'll see if you like a dirty Mexican motherfucker. Oh yeah. Cheers! Anyways, let's get into the spoilers and shit. We got a synopsis of this movie. This movie apparently is taking place five years after the last one, which was Jurassic Park Dominion. For those of you dumb motherfuckers who don't remember what Dominion was about, let me remind you. In the Jurassic Park Dominion, what happened last <coughs> was a bunch of dinosaurs were now living all over the earth and shit. Trying to adapt because they got loose from the islands. I don't know how and shit. Some, some billionaire... And the one before that one brought them down to, to the Americas and tried to sell them. And then they all got loose. And I don't know how. Now there's dinosaurs all over the world in cities and shit. Anyways, this is five years later. And what happens is that technology and really mostly pollution and trash. Pollution and trash. Man-made pollution and trash. Has killed a lot of the dinosaurs on Earth that had gone into civilian areas or populated areas because they cannot survive in disgusting conditions the way human beings can. We can live in trash and filth and smog and poison and fucking, fucking, uh, uh, Fluoride in our water and our toothpaste and antibiotics and our chickens and our fucking all of our genetically grown fucking fruits and vegetables that we buy in a fucking fucking stores and shit. And our 5G antennas in every goddamn corner sending all these electrical fucking vibrational waves through your body giving you cancer without you ever knowing why the fuck you even got cancer in the first place if you live a fail healthy fucking life. Well, guess what? The dinosaurs get affected by that too. And they die quicker than us. And so a lot of dinosaurs started dying. And most of the dinosaurs migrated. This is what the, the thing is about going to be about, by the way. Most of the dinosaurs migrate to the equator. Down to where there's tropical climates. 
and, uh, and that's where they go in the habitat. So no more dinosaurs all over the world. Now they're just around the equator in the jungles of the world. Mostly Ecuador, South America, and fucking the Amazons and shit like that. All right. The equator. They're not in Egypt or nothing like that. They got to be in jungles, okay? The Amazons and shit like that. That's where the dinosaurs have moved to. Well, Scarlett Yost is one of these scientists that wants to change the world because she's a strong woman and she's better and smarter than everybody because she went to Harvard and the professors taught her about non-binaryisms and how there's no genders and shit. And so she's a badass and she wants to change the world and she figures out that there's these three fucking dinosaurs that that lived for a long fucking time like they're really old they can live longer than all the other dinosaurs and they're more resistant to everything and diseases and pollutions and shit like that but not only that but they're ginormous they're then that she thinks there's something in their genetics and their dna that makes them special and that's why they're, they're they're huge and they live longer than everything else and they're more less susceptible to shit they're they're more you know they're pretty much indestructible is what they kind of want to say and she thinks if they can get dna from these three dinosaurs then they can help humanity to save them from cancer and aids and all these other diseases and they can live longer and shit like in the days of noah when people used to live to 300 years of age Supposedly, according to the Bible. I think the Jews are lying, but that's just my opinion. Anyways, um, that's the story. They're trying to get DNA from the three biggest dinosaurs that are special. And according to the leakers, the three biggest dinosaurs are going to be the Mosasaurus, which we already saw in the other movies. He's that big fucking alligator, whale, uh, shark thing that's humongous because that there it's eating a great white shark and a great white shark's fucking huge and then it's the the bird the quetzalcoatl uh which is a ginormous fucking pelican uh we've already seen it in one of the movies but we didn't see i think no yeah it was attacking a, a plane now that i remember the quetzalcoatl was a, attacking their plane now that i remember so yeah it did come out and you saw the size of it. It's a huge fucking pelican. Uh, and then it's going to be the Titanosaurus. Titanosaurus or whatever. It's like this humongous long neck that just dwarfs all the other long necks. It makes the other long necks look like fucking regular sized dinosaurs. Even though the long necks are the big ones out of all of them. Um... So yeah, those are the ones that they're going to have to try to go after and get their DNA to help humanity. And that's what the story is going to be about. You know what? I know uh, Timon says he'll pass, but I'm always in on these fucking movies because dinosaurs, I'm in. Anything with dinosaurs, kaijus, I'm in. I'll fucking go see it. I will. If it's really shitty, I might not pay for it, you know, but I'll see it. Uh, but yeah, I like fucking kaijus and ass and shit like that. Monsters. Dinosaurs. And stuff like that. I love it. So I'm totally in with that. Scarlet Yost? I'm definitely in with that. I don't have a picture of this. Uh, because I didn't realize it. But Mahersha Ali, they had a picture. They showed Mahersha Ali. Yeah, Mahersha Ali is in this. He's probably going to die right away because he's a black guy. That's the way it is in these movies. The, the white people are the, the, the good saviors of the movie. And the white guy, the black guy, is always sacrificial. But Mahersha Ali there, and he's holding a flare and shit to one of these dinosaurs. Trying to draw him away so he can get be bait and get killed. An ass. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I'm excited a little bit, you know, a little bit. They did say that Scarlet Yost gets stranded on an island with a family, and then, then that's where, that's pretty much what's going on in the movie and shit. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know how long they've been filming. I didn't even know. Nobody knew they started filming. They just suddenly dropped these pictures and this fucking logo. So they've probably, if, if they have just haven't just started, they've probably been filming for a while, maybe a month. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm amazed sometimes when these studios get away with going covert and and none of us knowing that these movies are even happening. I'm amazed when it happens. This is an instant of that. I mean, we knew that this movie was coming, the Scarlet Yost was fucking uh, cast, and that they was going to be called Rebirth. We said it like about a month ago. But they just released pictures, and they're filming already? Wow. You know, that blew my mind, and I don't think... Uh, I I'll give them props for that. Where it's all like, this didn't leak. They leaked it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's pretty good. This didn't leak. They leaked they leaked it. Here's the pictures, and here's the logo, and here's what the movie's about. They flat out came out and said, this is what the movie's about. Um, So props to them, man. The leakers didn't get the info. The studio put out the info. The, and and we're, when we, we don't have to worry about getting copyright strike for this ass, and possibly getting our channel deleted because the studio released it. Oh, yeah, so I'll cheers to them, motherfuckers. <sighs> all right, all right, let's move on for this bullshit. Because this week, they did release the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. The, the actual trailer, because last time it was a teaser, and they actually showed... Shadow and he talks and it's Keanu Reeves and there's nothing special. It sounds exactly like Keanu. Just talking like Keanu. Acting like Keanu. Uh, nothing special about the voice acting. The movie looks great. I think the special effects to what this movie is supposed to be like are, is good. I mean, special effects are great. I can't even say this looks cheap or nothing like that. That looks perfect. This looks fucking great. I have been a huge fan of all these fucking movies since the first one. You saw how I uh, reviewed the Knuckles show and I praised it. That's funny. It's great. Mind you, these are not for adults. This is for kids. Uh, and then I think adults can, can, can like this as long as you realize that there are not going to be no sex jokes and no fucking blood and deaths and sh this is for kids but it's still enjoyable even as an adult especially because it's sonic the hedgehog and it's done the right fucking way jim carrey is back as robotnik and he's even gained prosthetically some weight where he's probably gonna be fat like he's gonna have a stomach like the way he actually did in the game and then he he's also gonna play apparently his dad because he's playing two characters. He's playing Robotnik and he's playing Robotnik's dad. Um, it's pretty crazy. I like it. I, I like it. I'm very excited for this. I've loved the first one. I love the second one. I, I was really adamant about Knuckles being voiced by Ed, 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 Idris, Id, Idris Ilba. I was really mad. But it grew on me and I loved it. And the Knuckles show was fucking awesome. And perfect. The, it was like, to me, the Knuckles show was like what happens how you when you translate an actual cartoon into live action where there's those instances where it's slapstick and it's nonsense. And usually if you try to translate something like that into live action, it doesn't work. It does. It looks stupid. It's it's even embarrassing at times. This franchise does it the right way. It's figured it out. It's like you're watching a cartoon, but it's with real people. It's with real fucking... You know, obviously, these, these characters are not real. But it's what I'm trying to say. It's live action. This is done right. This is a fucking live action cartoon done right. I love this. Uh, 
and I and I and I gotta give them props, man. I will always fucking support this franchise. And the main reason why I will always support this franchise is because the studio knew a long time ago that it fucked up. It fucked up so bad that we all trashed it. And they saw the reception. And they realized that we cannot put this out. And they went as far as to delay the movie an entire year. The movie was done. The movie was done. And they went back for an entire year and changed every scene. Because this little blue fucking thing is the main character in the movie. Even though there's people in it. He is the main character in the movie. So he's basically in 95% of the film that's being shown to you. They went back and they fixed 95% of their film to make us happy. Wow. I will always give it up to this studio. I will always give it up to Sega for the people in charge of this franchise, of this movie franchise, because they did what none of the other studios are doing. They did what Disney, what DC, what Fox, what all these other piece of shit studios are not doing. They did. They listened to feedback. They listened to the fans. They listened to the consumer who is going to give you their money. And that, my friend, is how you continue to make money and you don't destroy an IP. God bless these people over there at Sega and the director and everyone who was in charge of this fucking live action ass. Because even though it probably cost them millions of dollars to redo the whole fucking uh, CGI shit, the whole character, the whole movie to redo it. It paid off. It paid off in the end. Because here we are. Part three. And already had a spin-off show. A hit spin-off show, by the way. That everyone loved and watched. Yeah. This is great. There's going to be more of these. There's going to be part four. We still There's more characters we need to see. There's Silver the Hedgehog. We haven't seen Uncle Chuck and the Metal Sonic. Uh, we haven't seen Amy or, or Big Cat. Uh, there's, there's so much they can still do. So, so much. This is, this is great. I love this. Uh, I can't wait till it comes out. We'll review it here, of course. You know what it is. Paramount. Thank you, Street Team Tony. You the man for that. Paramount. Uh, the geniuses, man. The geniuses. This was going to come out. Uh, actually, the, the, the TV show, the Knuckles show came out on Paramount. That's where it was out. Uh, that's where it came out. Uh, I reviewed it here. It's a great show. It's funny. I really loved it. It's funny. I enjoyed it a lot. It was like watching a live action cartoon. That's what it was. And and, and this was this is what these movies are like. They're great. Um like I said, as far as Keanu, there's nothing special about it. It's just Keanu, it's his voice. Um I guess once you start seeing it, you'll forget about it and, and just just you'll start noticing just Hopefully you'll just start losing yourself in it and realize that it's just Shadow the Hedgehog and whatnot. Uh, but yeah. Um, cheers to this movie and this franchise. I think they've done good. They're going to continue to do good. I'm happy about it. I can't even trash it. Cheers. I love this trailer. I'm excited. Had to take a hit there. Take a little drink, a swig. 
Because we're about to get into some serious business. Because apparently next July in 2025, we will have the battle of the cinemas. Because out of nowhere, Jurassic World, which we just talked about, Rebirth, announced that they will release July 2nd, 2025. Well, James Gunn's stupid attempt to save a franchise will supposedly begin on July 11th, 2025. And then Marvel's Fantastic Four long-awaited First Steps family is going to come out July 2025, 20, 20, 2025. So in one month, we will have... These three big franchises fighting to make money, basically. July is a big month when it comes to families, summer, and kids being out of school because they go back in August. That's probably the most time people go to the theaters is in July. That's a known fact. That's just it happens. July. Some of August, but July is the big the July is the big one. Especially the fourth of July weekends, the big fucking weekend. Everybody's at the theaters. That's why that's why Independence Day with Will Smith was such a huge fucking hit. Because it was Fourth of July weekend that weekend when it came out. Everybody was fucking on it. One outcome. One possible outcome is going to happen here. And it's obvious. One of these movies is going to take the L. These three huge franchises are all going to come out in, one, in the same month. One of these is unfortunately going to be the loser and make the least money. Because the other two are going to release in the same month. And are going to force families and people to choose just what movie we could want to see. I think it's safe to say... Then it's going to be none other than James Gunn's piece of shit Superman movie. Fuck you, James Gunn. You're going to fail. People are going to be excited about seeing Scarlett Yo's Hansen and dinosaurs and ass. And they're going to go as soon as it comes out. And then during the next month, when your movie, the next week, when your movie comes out, they're going to say, oh, the new, the next family, because they wait the next week. The next family waits until the second week to go out and shit. The next 12 kids and shit. The child support and the mistress and all her kids and the girlfriend with her kids. All the kids are coming. And they say, what movie do we see and pay for? Oh, we got two choices. Jurassic World Rebirth with dinosaurs for all the kids. And Scarlett Johansson. For the males and action stars and shit for all the ass. Or we got Superman that has failed for the past 15 years in the hands of a studio who doesn't know how to do IPs good. Oh, well, we're going to choose the dinosaurs, you dumbass. And they're going to lose money. And then two more weeks are going to go by and more families are going to go to theaters. They're going to say, oh, we got three choices. We got Jurassic World. We got the Superman. Oh, we got the new Fantastic Four. It's supposed to save the MCU and the Marvel Universe connected to the Robert Downey Jr., Dr. Doom and shit. That's what's going to bring them in. Dr. Doom, Robert Downey Jr., Fantastic Four. Let's go, motherfucker. And you're going to lose money again, James Gunn. So fuck you. Your DC Universe is dead in the water, you idiot. You should have released this movie in January. You might have had a little bit of sense, you idiot. You're fucked up. 
Nobody likes you. Nobody wants you. And you're a piece of shit. Fucking spiky. Oh, I have white hair. And, 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 and I have glasses. And I fucking have a black shirt like Steve Jobs and shit. And I'm a nerd. Fuck you, James Gunn. You're a fucking pretentious piece of shit. And your DC Universe is gonna fail. You dumbass. No one's gonna see Superman. All of your shows are gonna get cancelled immediately. And shit. And fucking, the only thing you're gonna be good for is to hire Ezra Miller in your next fucking movie about fucking leeches that latch onto people's brains or some stupid dumbass idea like that. So fuck you. Game's good. You dumbass. We're moving on! Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. I'm trying, fellas. I'm trying new things and new techniques. I really am. Anyways, let's move on here. Oh my god. You know, I idolize celebrities. You already know this. I'm a big movie guy. I like TV shows. I like people that are richer than me. I love them a lot and I look up to them. But it pisses me off when these gods among normal, meek men reach an age of adult infancy is what I call it. They reach an age of adult infancy. And then it becomes apparent that it's very easy to take advantage of these people. Uh, and it pisses me off when people take advantage of the elderly. Not only the elderly, but the legendary elderly. Because this week, none other than the legendary, the great, the first ever strongest woman ever, Sargoni Weaver. Shit. Sargoni Weaver has come out and said, Hey, I am actually going to be in the Mandalorian and Grogu movie. And I just did some scenes. And they let me hold Grogu. Oh, yeah. Is what she said. But we, we know what this means. This means... <laughs> God damn it. They tricked her into a dying franchise to embarrass herself in a movie that's probably not going to be make any sense and going to destroy the lore even more with lesbianisms and ass. God damn it. Ha! Ah. This poor lady. If she thinks this is a good thing, that she's now in Star Wars with Grogu and the Mando. Oh, yeah, she says. The fuck oh yeah. I don't want to be next to Star Wars or, or mentioned in a sentence with Star Wars or nothing again. I'm embarrassed to say that I even have any of this old collectibles and shit. All of this... Shit that I own has been tainted. Tainted by the mouse and their piece of shit tactics and their 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 dumbass stories and their characters and their fucking bullshit. Tainted and destroyed. I'm embarrassed to even say I, I even even I even know what Star Wars is. This poor Sexy lady. Sexy as fuck. 
I would ravage in an instant, by the way. In her old age. Oh, yeah. Sexy as fuck. Got tricked into this fucking role that she took. For this piece of shit company. God damn it. It's pissing me off. We'll have to wait for a trailer. Because like she said, apparently they're filming this already. So money is being spent. Money is being misused. Money is being thrown away. As we speak. Those motherfuckers need to throw some of that over here. But whatever. Let's keep it going, fellas. We're not done with the Star Wars ass, unfortunately. Because we did talk about last week and the week before and the week before and the week before. How much the Acolyte sucks ass. And everyone knows it too. Because everyone stopped watching it after episode 2. And the ratings went down. And the 400 plus million dollars they spent on merchandise and toys and fucking paying all these actors and sets and scripts and non-binaries, gays and lesbians and fucking transsexuals and all this bullshit they spend the money on. They now realize they're never going to get it back. Well, that's what happens when you go woke. You truly do go broke. Trying to be cliche, but I'm just stating the facts and the goddamn truth. All right? You idiot. We talked about last week how the show got canceled. Then I got to be no season two. No follow up to your favorite storylines or the questions and the mysteries left unanswered and unsolved because the motherfuckers don't know how to write to begin with. Let's be honest. Idiots. You know, a smart motherfucker would find a way to make a cohesive story. End it in a way where it actually has an ending. But at the same time, still leaves it open. In case it does get renewed. But does it, in a way, leave it open in case it doesn't. That's what a smart motherfucker does. But this dumb lesbian... And so, I am better than everybody, and I know that everyone's going to love my shit. Yeah. And then what happens? Nobody likes your shit, and you get canceled, and you leave a whole bunch of unanswered questions and ass. You dumb bitch. Anyways. We also said... That Disney went ahead and took a lot of the, the merchandise and all the shit because they realized, well, fuck, no one's going to buy this ass. Let's just throw it in the dumpster and the dumpster fire and set on fire and shit. That's it. All the merchandise, the toys, let's just cancel it. Pre-orders. Nobody was pre-ordering. Nobody was pre-ordering. I think only the director and Kathleen Kennedy pre-ordered. There were like three, three P or pre-orders for that $500 mask. Nobody gave a fuck about Ezra Miller and his copper iron helmet. Whatever the fuck smiley face. Stupid Sith Lord that was. <sighs> well, they did put some of them because, you know, they felt them bad. They got embarrassed. Everybody was making fun of them. Ah, oh, they removed all the products. Those pussies. Well, they got embarrassed. and They put some of the shirts back up. You know, let's try to make some money. There's going to be some lesbians out there. There's going to be some non-binaries out there. They're going to like this. So let's fucking put some of this stuff back up there. Well, there's no shortage of trolls out there. Because right away, for the products that were put back up on the shelves, we got reviews. I'm going to read some of those reviews for you. I'm going to objectify, but I'm just going to tell you the facts. Here we go. Chupa Mi Verga, that's the guy who left a review. And uh, a quick translation for those of you who don't know Mexican. Chupa Mi, Me Chupa Mi Verga is a translation to suck my dick. <laughs> and I'm not lying. 
this guy's name on the Disney review site in Mexican is Suck My Dick. Chupa Mi Verga. Ah, two days ago, he said, This shirt is so poor design. Perfect example of what the show was as well. Poor design. Oh, <laughs> fucking troll. And of course, he says the quality and the value of the product is shitty. Another guy who says, no more, no more nonsense. He says, what a disappointment. The, he says, the failure of one, the failure of two, the failure of Disney. Oh, this guy. Another guy named Acolyte Gone says trash. Trash, 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 trash. No, I don't like this product. Oh. Some guy named Boba Fett 99 says poor quality product. Poor quality. I'll concede ill conceived and not worry the mo the money. I'll conceived and not worry the money. Spend your money on O O T or prequel stuff. No, I don't recommend this product. So yeah. There's a trolls and review bombings on the few products, and I mean few, that were brought back to sell. Mostly because nobody was pre-ordering or actually ordering these shirts. And so the reason why they took them off was why we're not going to print these out, obviously. If we're not getting more than 100 orders... We're not going to print out, make a whole fucking, because when you print out a shirt, you have to make this fucking, uh, an imprint or a stamp. Like, you make this thing, right? That the, the, the iron just, that shit's expensive to make, you know? And if you're going to make one of those things for five shirts, it's not worth it, you know? And when you go to make personal shirts, they even tell you that there's a minimum. You know, you can't just make one shirt this complicated design because we lose money so they know and that's why a lot of the products got removed because they were not selling enough so that's why they returned money and they did we're not going to sell enough so let's just put a few and that'll force people to buy enough quantities to make some kind of money back that's how they think and that's what's going on they're not going to make no money nobody's buying this ass no one uh, what I am really fucking fascinated about is how this fucking guy can get away with putting his actual name as Sucka My Dick, Chupa Mi Verga, and get away with it, and still live, leave a review and have it come out for other people to read. Well, fuck you, man. We get strikes for less. This motherfucker is debaucherous telling kids suck my dick in other languages. On the Disney website. And nothing's happening to him or his YouTube channel. Yet we're probably going to get demonetized and fucking strikes for saying chupa mi verga, suck on my dick. You sons of bitches. Fuck you, YouTube. And fuck you, Disney and the Acolyte. You fucking trash. I am happy and I revel in the fact that you are failing in your fucking bullshit of trying to sell stuff to people. You ass. Star Wars. And bullshit the Acolyte. Cheers. Speaking of companies that want to shove shit down your throat. Well, I mean, actually, we were talking about a company that Disney, Disney, 
loves to shove shit down your throat, whether you like it or not. You're going to get it. Open your mouth, open your pussy and your asshole, loom it up. You're getting it from the mouse, whether you like it or not. Well, none other than the great Kevin Feige has officially confirmed the rhetoric I just stated. Yes, my friends, because Kevin Feige just said in an interview this week that the show Agatha All Along, which, by the way, I have said from the very beginning, it was announced that this show is going to be littered and full of nothing but gays, lesbians, homosexuals, non-binaries, trans, queers, confused, and fucking mental patients. I've said it from the beginning. Let it be known that it is what it is. We've seen the trailers. That's what's happening. It did. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's what it's going to be. The whole show. All right? That's the truth. Well, now Kevin Feige has come out and pretty much said, yeah, 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 yeah. We're doing this Agatha all along disaster tour where we're talking to fucking people. And Kevin Feige opened his mouth and he said, and by you, this is three weeks. Three Fucking weeks before the premiere, before anyone even sees it or judges it, Kevin Feige has come out and said, It's true. No one asked for this show. No one is asking for a show full of gays, queers, non binaries, lesbians, transsexualisms. Non-binarisms, no genders, all these agendas. No one is asking for it. But that's exactly what you're going to get. Kevin Feige said, this is the show that the, sh that the fans don't want, but they're going to get it anyways. That's basically what he's saying. So there you go, folks. Fuck you and your $15 a month for Disney+. Plus. If you want to pay it with no ads, it's $25 a month so you don't get a commercial of more advertisements for Disney and ass. All right? You want to get some more shit, it's going to cost you more money. Fuck you. The shit you want, the shit you are paying money for and you're begging for, fuck you. You're not going to get it. We're going to give you more gay and lesbians. Non-binaries, transsexuals. Whether you like it or not, we don't give a fuck. You already gave us your money. You're getting this ass. That's what Kevin Feige is saying. Three weeks before the premiere, he says, fuck you. You don't want this. You didn't ask for this. But you're getting it anyways. Because you already gave me your money and I took it. Because you signed up. And you put automatic payment, and every 13th of the month, your bank gets deducted and gives me more money. I'm really pissed off, and I need to cool down my jets before I have a heart attack. And the only way I can do this is to cheers to an OG woke packer, Timothy Nose. Teaching that is very much forgotten. You are not to be a person that is oversensitive. Thank you for being here, Timothy Nosy. It's been a while, motherfucker. Cheers! And remember, it's always... Live. Oh, yeah. Cheers! Oh, 
that was badass. That made me feel better about this Agatha ass. Ugh. But unfortunately, I'm not done talking about this. So I'm going to get mad again and pissed off and my fucking blood pressure is going to go at, go up again. Because three weeks before the premiere, the Agatha All Along Disasters Tour is not over. Because Kevin Feige says, oh, me trashing the fucking viewers and telling them, I don't give a shit what you want because I'm not going to give you what you want. You're going to get this gay shit that you don't want. That's the way it is. Well, now we have one of the actors coming out and talking and running their mouths in interviews three weeks before it even premieres. Get ready to piss off your audience, folks. Because guess what? None other than Joe Locke. This motherfucker was playing Wiccan, the Scarlet Witch's son, this fucking deformed fucking Remy Malik. He this Remy Malik shat out this little boy. And uh, and now he's alive. And he's also deformed. Because he came out of Mary uh, fucking uh, Remy Malik. It's like that's this is how he reproduces and, and clones himself. This little boy has now come out and said because they asked him in an interview, oh, your character's gay and, and you're non-binary and, and, and people are hating on you. I don't know who the fuck is hating on him. I mean, I'm hating on him right now, technically. But before this, I mean, I didn't even know whatever the fuck. But I don't know who's been talking shit about him. But apparently this reporter says everyone's talking shit about you liking men and being on this show. What do you have to say to all your haters? And this little boy responds... Well, all I'm going to say is the MCU fan boys and all you geeks and comic book nerds and Son of Man and the Underground Broadcast and his little woke pack fucking guys, all of you motherfuckers, all right? You have big mouths and you talk a lot and you have a lot of opinions, but at the end of the day, you're just jealous because I am doing something you wish you were. I am actually starring in a Marvel production and you're not. Jealous. This little piece of shit. Let me tell you one thing, you little fuckhead, you little deformed, fucking alien looking, fucking, I don't know what you are. You're like a half breed of a fucking hobbit and fucking Mary, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Uh, fucking Peter Dinklage over here and shit. Your face is crooked, you son of a bitch. I don't know why the fuck people are saying you're handsome and shit. You're handsome for a motherfucker who's deformed. That's what you are. But let me tell you something, little boy. Ain't nobody. On this channel especially. Ain't nobody jealous of the fact that you are a star on the Agatha all along. Maybe if you were in the Iron Man movie or the Avengers or Fantastic Four or Secret Wars or Deadpool and Wolverine. I would have been jealous of your little bitch ass. But Agatha all along? God damn it. You stay in that fucking show and you fucking die. Your whole career dies on that fucking show. Okay, ain't nobody gonna ever give you a job after that fucking disaster of a show that you just signed up for. You dumb little piece of shit. The fuck I'm jealous of you. The fuck anyone down here is jealous of you. The fuck any one of us is jealous of you. You idiot. I'll piss in your mouth. You'd probably like it too. Because I know how you motherfuckers over there in motherfucking San Francisco like that shit. I've seen the videos. Motherfucker over there opening his mouth. People going up to him and pissing in it. And that's legal in San Francisco apparently in the public place. There could be a fat, gay, white man naked in a pool of water. A baby pool. Naked. With his mouth open. And people go right up to him walking down the street and piss in his mouth. That's legal in San Francisco, apparently. That's where this kid belongs. And this whole damn show that Kevin Feige is trying to feed to you and your children belongs. Is all I'm going to say. All right. I'm all about wearing makeup and looking like a woman and feeling pretty. I feel like a woman. I'm all about that shit. 
Well, all this debaucherous non-binaryism and trying to indoctrinate kids and being perverted and shit. Fuck you, Feige, and fuck you, little boy. You take that shit to your fucking dungeon and your basements and shit, and you keep it there. Nobody wants it in the public, you dumbass. We're moving on from this show, and I can't wait to review it, because I know it's going to be trash, and you know goddamn well we are going to spare no fucking uh, four-letter word to describe it. So I'm going to say, we're moving on from this dick, and this ass, and this shit. <sighs> Alright. Let's move on to the Marvel. The real Marvel ass. And actually, this is some of the good stuff. Because they finally leaked... The Daredevil Born Again trailer in good quality, too. And I can't show you the whole trailer or, or the sound because we'll get fucking banned. But I'm showing you the best part of the trailer, and it's basically him fighting and beating people up. But in the trailer, you see a lot of stuff. Like, you see him and Foggy and Karen. And he's also fucking Karen somewhere in the shower or something. He's fucking the shit out of her. And then... um. You see Wilson Fisk, and he's talking to him in a restaurant. And they're kind of being friendly with each other, but they know, like, you know. And Daredevil basically tells him, like, you want to run for mayor, and you're being serious, and you want to change the city for good, that's fine. But if you get out of line, I'm going to be right there. And Fisk tells him, is that you talking or your other self, the devil? And Matt smiles. And then when he smiles, you see this montage of all of him fucking fighting everybody. And going crazy. Uh, pretty dope, man. I'm not saying, like, the trailer looks bad. The trailer does look badass. It really does. Uh, I just sneezed. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm really quick, quick with that mute button nowadays. The trailer makes it look badass, but let's be honest, the trailer made Echo look amazing. And then Echo turned out to be some fucking poorly edited, reworked piece of ass. This is something that's reworked and reshot as well. So we don't know uh, how good this is going to be, if it's going to be any good, or if this is just trailer magic showing us something that could be, or could have been. Um, I like him using his nunchucks and the thing that comes out like a rope out of it. I really like that a lot. It's like the comic books. Um, some of these look really violent. There is somebody like, especially at the end there where he's hammering down on the guy. He's actually beaten the shit out of because I, like I said, I can't show it to you full screen because we'll get banned. So I'm only showing you part part of it. He's beating the shit out of Muse. And we do get a quick fucking look at the Muse. And I'll show it to you right, right now. He looks dope as fuck. His mask is weird. It almost looks like... Damn, I don't even know how to... I don't even know, man. It looks, it looks fucking crazy. It almost looks like it's his skin, but it's not. I don't even know how they did this. I don't know how they did this, but it looks so badass. Uh, I like how I like the way it looks. I like I like it a lot. I like the the it's supposed to be blood stains, but it's black that's dripping down from his eyes as tears. I liked it a lot. And I like how his mouth looks like it's fabric or a sock. But then when you move up to his nose and his eyes, it doesn't look like a mask. It looks like that's part of his actual skin. So I don't know what he's wearing, and I don't know how they did this, but it looks fucking dope as fuck, is all I'm going to say. He does look like he's from Slipknot or Mushroom Head. You're absolutely right. Um, mushroom Head more. Those looks like the Mushroom Head masks. I like him. I like how he looks. He's basically a street kid. One of these 
what do they call the, the people that tag spray paint and shit? Well, he he does that, but he kills people and then uses their blood to paint stuff and shit. Like Banksy. Uh so he kinda he kinda does that and shit. Uh they do show in the trailer Punisher's in it. I don't have a picture of it, but the Punisher is in it. He comes out and he's in he's talking to uh to Daredevil. Um they see the white tiger. He looks lame. He looks just like the leaks I showed you the pictures from a while back. It looks just like it. Um uh, Mudvayne, you're right. It looks a little bit like Mudvayne. This image over here is a fan art that someone did. But that picture where it's all these different Daredevil masks, that's actually in the trailer. And I have a, a, a still frame of that. Uh, Matt opens up a closet or something and he goes in it. And when he walks in it, there's all these suits. Like there's all these masks for different suits. And it's so dope because there's the silver one. There's two red ones, the yellow one, which we already seen, and then the black one. It looks so good. The black one with the red eyes looks so fucking dope. I really hope he uses it. Uh, I really, really hope he uses it. Um, cause he look, they look cool, man. They look fucking dope as fuck. That might be the only thing we ever see of this. It might just be a quick scene. And then all he ever does is wear the red suit and shit. Um, I'm excited for this, but we have to wait until March of next year. Which is, uh... Which is just, just kind of long to wait, is what I say. God damn it. <laughs> it's still a long ways. Right now they're filming season two of it. It's a, the insane story about this whole series is that 18 episodes were already shot. For the first season, 18 episodes were already shot. Kevin Feige came back from vacation. They showed him the 18 episodes. And Kevin Feige got super mad. Supposedly because his two favorite characters in Marvel are Daredevil and Silver Surfer. So he said he saw the 18 episodes and he got super mad and he fired everyone in production. He fired the directors and he fired the writers. And he said, we're starting from scratch. And he told all the actors, we're coming back to reshoot everything. They say they didn't throw everything away from the 18 episodes. They said Feige liked some things. But he wanted a different story. So they reshot a lot. A lot. And they made it more violent, apparently. Um, that's what also Matt Murdock, uh, the Charlie Cox said, is that it's actually more violent now than it was before the first time they shot it. Um, so we'll see what this ends up, because from 18 episodes that were shot for the first season... They reshot this, kept some things from the 18, you know, they kept some stuff footage, and they ended up with eight episodes that we're going to get in March. And right now, they're filming season two for this, which is probably going to be another eight. But it's crazy that they went from 18 down to eight. I kind of am very curious. I mean, shit, man. We'll never get to see it. None of us. But, oh, man. If I ever get on the inside, I would beg or suck somebody's dick to see those 18 episodes that were originally shot. And I, want, I would love to see what disaster it really was that Feige claims. Because he did the same thing to the Echo. The Echo was eight episodes that were shot. He saw it. He hated it. They brought everyone back. They reshot it. And they condensed it down to five episodes. And those five episodes were ass. 
and very it was just you could tell everything was pieced together from other stuff because they, they just the story didn't make sense there was stuff that was obviously missing because it just suddenly jumped to something without no explanation and the ending it wasn't even an ending it didn't have an ending it was really choppy and fucked up it made no sense um so i don't know we'll see what this eight episodes of season one turn out to be because the trailer's making it look badass but you never know you never know rob zombie directing a marvel movie would be cool you say you want him to direct a fucking a a, a, a punisher movie that'd be badass but just rob zombie doing a even doing a Daredevil would be badass. Or a Midnight Suns, a Doctor Strange, a Ghost Rider. Anything like that, I think Rob Zombie would kill it. For sure. Um, Jason Statham? Oh! You know what? That guy would make a good Ghost Rider, but he's too British. I don't think he could do American accent. That motherfucker's not that talented. Anyways, let's move it on with the Marvel ass. Because we heard this week that Jane Spader has run out of money and has decided to come back as old Tron. And the Vision, the, Vi the White Vision series, we're finally getting five years after the fact of WandaVision. And shit, I even forgot this character even existed in the MCU. Five years have gone by, and we've heard nothing about the White Vision that's somewhere out there who knows what he's doing. But we're finally going to get to know what he's doing, because apparently Ultron, James Spader, is coming back to wear that stupid suit, or maybe just do voiceovers, because he doesn't want to be an idiot anymore. Uh, but he's coming back, and he's going to be Ultron. I don't know in what fucking capacity... Or what role exactly is a flashback, just a voice on a computer? I don't know. We don't know. But Ultron some way is somehow coming back. I always said Ultron is the type of villain you can never kill because he's loose on the internet. I mean, he'll be out there stored on a hard drive on a USB somewhere, a backup he left, and all it's going to take is somebody to plug it in. Oh, what is this? Plug it in, and he's back again. He's not stupid. Um, so Ultron is just a villain that can never die because of that. Uh, that, you know, the logic of that. A machine thinking like that. But since we are getting a Vision show, I think it's pretty much obvious and everyone is expecting it that Elizabeth Olsen, the Scarlet Witch, is going to come back for this big, nice big hips, nice big titties. No ass, but it doesn't matter. The hips and the titties and the beautiful face make up for it. We all love it. Shitty, shitty fucking Russian accent and we're glad she does American now when she's Wanda. She doesn't need to be pretending to be Russian because she never was good at it anyways. Anyways, so yeah, it's expected. Elizabeth Olsen is going to probably come back as Wanda. But I think everyone's going to be very surprised to find out that she is coming back. But not as Wanda. A completely different character. She's actually coming back, supposedly, as Virginia Vision. In the comic books, comic books, Vision fucking uh, basically gets sad. This, this is obvious what they're going to do. In the comic books, he gets sad and he makes a family. You know, he makes a family of himself so that he can have a family, live a normal life. So he makes androids and shit. Sentience ones. He has a little boy, a little girl, Vivian. I forget what the guy's name is. Probably Victor or some shit. And then the, little, the, the wife is named Virginia. Virginia is actually her brainwaves and schematics were fucking vision. Uh, uh, copied them or patterned them after the Scarlet Witch Wanda because he obviously loves her. And so because that's in the comic books, he's obviously going to do the same thing in this show. 
And that's why Elizabeth Olsen is going to play the robot version of his wife. Because he's sad that he misses her and he's going to make a family and he's going to make the robot wife to be Elizabeth Olsen. Scarlet Witch. Green hair, looking like a fucking pink, fucking big titty. Nice hips. Uh, beautiful face. Top of shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of stuff that's going to happen in this new show. Going to blow everyone's mind. Not me. And I'll tell you why. Because this is basically WandaVision. This is the same fucking show. This is WandaVision. Oh, what happened in WandaVision? Wanda is so sad that she misses... Uh, uh, she misses Vision. That she makes up a world in a fantasy uh, where Vision is back alive and, and they have kids and shit. Well, what is the Vision show? Oh, Vision is so sad that he can't have Wanda anymore. And shit, because she died. So he makes up his own family to be fucking Wanda and kids. It's the same show again! This is fucking stupid. You're gonna feed us a recycled show. A recycled plot. To characters that we've already like lost interest in because it's been five fucking years since you decided to pick up the trail that you left off with. Fucking sad and embarrassing. The only good thing is Elizabeth Olsen is hot as fuck. And Paul Bettany is one hell of a good actor. So that might still be something to look forward to. But we'll see what this ass... Oh yeah, James Spader's good. James Spader's good. And he's one of the few actors, I'm not gonna lie, one of the few actors that has not been accused of sexual molestation with children or anything like that. So this is, this this is, this has some some promise, some you know some kind of something to look forward to, but we're gonna have to wait for the trailer for more spoilers to come out because you know how it is with Marvel and shit. Anyways, speaking of spoilers, holy shit! Someone got video of the fucking. Uh, standing actor for Ebon Musk or whatever his name is. I forget what his name is. For the Fantastic Four. The Thing. And we got our first unofficial, official look of what he's going to look like in the film. But what's crazy is that the stand-in is not CGI. It's not a guy wearing a green suit. It's not a fucking a, 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 a ping pong ball. Or, you know, it's a guy wearing a rubber suit. So. The approach Marvel is taking is to have an actual stand-in actor. In a rubber suit. Act out in front of the other actors. And then. They'll. CGI on top of it. To give it face expressions. It's basically what they do with the Spider-Man. Because the eyes. Tom Holland can't make the eyes move. Or none of that. Or Deadpool. is this the same thing with Deadpool. They just go add CGI on top of it. To make the mouth and everything else move. This is the most comic accurate thing we've ever had. As far as the size, the dimensions, the look in itself, his face, the color. He looks like he's ra just ripped right out of the comic books. It's what he fucking looks like. This is good. I can't even trash this. This is fucking badass. Um, 
I can't wait to see a, an actual trailer with all of them in it using using their powers. This is fucking badass. I can't believe also that this leaked. Somebody needs to get fired. Because this is like, there's a guy right there. I mean, he's right there filming it. It looks like he's inside of a building or inside of a something. Like a window. He's doing, he's shooting it through a window. Maybe he's in the bathroom taking a shit. And he just saw it and he took a, took a phone out. That's crazy. I tell you one thing, man. I would hate to be that fucking actor. Uh, because I bet you that suit is hot as fuck. You're sweating in there. And you can hardly breathe. I bet you he can't even breathe in that son of a bitch. Damn. The eyebrows are perfect. You're right, Street Team Tony. They're fucking perfect. It looks just like the comic books. It looks just like the comic books. I mean, we had seen this fucking silhouette before. And the silhouette, to me, looked perfect as far as the way, you know, his dimensions and shit. But this looks even better. I can't wait to see the CGI face actually moving and, uh, and talking and shit. And I hope he talks like this and shit. He better sound like me. They should have gotten me to fucking voice this motherfucker. We're being better. Anyways. That's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. If they ever show us a fucking trailer. An ass. You motherfuckers. Alright. I think I'm done. With all this bullshit. And I'm done ranting. A lot. For tonight. Alright. Everything's been fucking up. I'm kind of pissed that YouTube and Google are coming after us. Trying to sabotage our channel every time we start doing a show. And ass. Fuck you. But let me go ahead and say this. A little bit of life advice for you to take home for the evening. You motherfuckers. Um, if you ever see a dog loose in the streets. And it's coming after you barking. Shit. Don't ever run away scared don't ever show any fear because a loose dog is probably lost anyways and he's freaking out doesn't know what's going on and he's probably more afraid of you than, than you are of him and the minute you show any weakness that motherfucker's gonna chase you and bite you so you need to do what I do whenever there's a dog that comes over here that's trying to act tough and shit I fucking go, Aah! and I run towards them at full speed and shit, and those motherfuckers will run away. Works every time. Uh, and in case they don't run away and they come after you too, then uh, jump really high, as high as you can, and then land with your feet right on top of his spine, but kill the dog automatically. Easiest way to destroy a pit bull. You don't even need a gun. Anyways, pit bulls are dangerous. You should have known them. People are idiots. All right, we're done. We're done for this week. I'll see you all next week. Cheers. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?